Welcome to The Improv. Someone, as always, I'm your host, Spencer. With me today, I have a very special guest. I always say I have a special guest, so to change it up, I've taken that person's first name, and I've taken the first letter of an adjective that starts with that first name. You get the idea, and I put it together, and I just do this so I have time to think of an adjective. And today, uh, give it up for Totally Troy! <laughs> Yay! How's it going, I Troy? <laughs> completely Troy. You know, you're totally Troy. Oh, you're right. I'm totally Troy. Totally me. <laughs> How's it going? I'm going. It's, uh, it's going good. I haven't left this basement in like three years. Two years? Nah. Mm. No, you know, I haven't left this yellow box in a couple years, so I'm still oh here. Someone, someone let me out. Just no kidding. I let you That's... out of the box. It's wild <laughs> how many guests you've had on this show and none of them have helped you at all. Yeah, I know. It's it's uh, quite unfortunate. But maybe today is the day. <laughs> maybe today. Don't get your hopes up. But <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to stick with this very bright yellow box for the next however long. Um, but luckily, I have my little logo up here now. You do. So it's not behind me. It's there. You don't have your Enough finger all of the time, but you have yeah. a logo. <laughs> I know. Sometimes I don't have a finger. Sometimes I just have a fist. Oh, that Ooh. fist actually works better. Yeah. Than the finger. That's weird. Yeah, this got a whole lot punchier. Oh, 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 oh. All right, that was that was the dad joke of the show. Um, oh, there will be more. Great, I love it. Uh, I always try to get one good <laughs> one in there, but we've already started off with a good one, so uh, we'll move, we'll keep moving. Um, let's just dive in, shall we? Uh, let's talk about you and your improv experience. What is your background in improv? What is your experience in improv? <laughs> Well, I had so many traumatic experiences in high school and middle school of improv that I will not start there. <laughs> so basically, Great. I always liked comedy. I always liked entertainment. And obviously, I went to film school at USC, where I also minored in acting and writing. So, you know, I've always been intrigued by the improv skill and been a big fan of whose line is it anyway. But as I said before, the improv in suburban Chicago was not super great to be a part of or to watch when you are 13 to 15 years old. So obviously that colored my whole experience. And I went to USC where to be in an improv troupe was such a big deal. And I had so much other stuff going on with plays and short films and stuff that I was like, I don't know if I'm going to fit in with this vibe of these people who are always on their laptops and I never see them actually doing improv, but I understand hypothetically they do improv. So I leave college and believe it or not, film school does not lead to an immediate, uh, to an immediate hiring frenzy. So after what? a year- No. No, it doesn't, surprisingly. So after a As year- with a master's in film, <laughs> I don't, I can't relate at all. Not at yeah, all. Yeah, no. Oh, Masters. So you must be like yeah. Kevin Feige by now, right? Yeah, I'm totally like, you know, rolling in the dough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, just throwing money, like, all underneath that window. You just see, like, stacks of Benjamins. Yeah, all rolling in the dough people. that I have to repay to the government. That's really more, like, uh, <laughs> The joy of freelance work. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, um... So yeah, so the year is 2019, the last year of normalcy. I am going nowhere doing nothing. So I'm like, hey, I should, I really like acting and comedy. Why have I not done improv? <laughs> and I'm just like, well, I don't know how to do acting classes. Like, I don't know which ones are not scams. So I know Groundlings and UCB. So I'll do one of their classes and all these extras are telling me, do UCB, do UCB. So I checked the prices and UCB was very expensive for its beginning class, but Groundlings had the cheapest class for its seminar on improv. So I did a seminar in improv for two months and then, and I really started getting into it and I really enjoyed like the games and the ability to like write while you act and stuff. And it, it even gave me the confidence to finally get cast in something, a certain Jamba Juice the musical directed mm -hmm. by this irrelevant person who yeah, I don't very know. Very irrelevant. That show is long gone. <laughs> very long gone. Oh, and, and written by another irrelevant person who also I won't mention long who wrote, gone. introduced it. With wonderful music by Mia Cotton. 
Oh, yes. No, no, they're all very good people. Oh, dear. Now I'm like, ah, I've insulted like five people on accident when I meant to only insult you. No, you only God. insulted one. Uh, okay. That's why I was saying the music, music by Mia Cotton. <laughs> it's gone horribly wrong. I'm sorry. But anyway, so I did the groundlings and I really enjoyed their exercises. So I, again, just on a what's going to keep me in L.A. after Jamba Juice, uh, he was like, I'll go. Audition. Starbucks, the musical. Huh? Starbucks. Starbucks, yeah, the musical, course. yeah. And you know, you can't when you can't get a job at the actual Starbucks, you might as well do the musical. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, no. So then I tried out for the Groundling School, and I got in on my first try. And then I got another show, which kept me in L.A. And then I did basic at Groundlings, and I passed. And then I was starting intermediate, had to drop out to do a show. And then a week later, the class ended because there was a global pandemic. So I shouldn't have dropped out because I would have gotten more of a refund that way. (laughs) And then I've done Groundlings classes online. And during the pandemic, I switched over to the conservatory program at Second City Chicago, where for the past year, I've been going through six classes. We just started our final class last night in person in Chicago. And we will be doing our big grad review in March. March. I like that. Uh, I just like this. March. The end of time. March. <laughs> what will <laughs> I do after March? Who knows? Well, just think about March 2022 being uh, <laughs> literally two years since the pandemic started. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Ooh, yikes. Oh, uh, this oh, was no. my... Uh, my second birthday in pandemic, uh, and oh. uh, I always want to say it's my third, but it was not because I had a birthday before, right before pandemic, and then in pandemic I turned thirty, and then now I'm older than thirty, but I'm still turning thirty because I haven't left pandemic yet, so I'm still turning thirty again this year. <laughs> February twenty twenty was possibly the busiest month I have ever been in my life, and I remember thinking at the time, if this goes on this same way for the whole year and is this like soul crushingly busy i don't know how i'm gonna cope with it and then so you so you're the reason why pandemic exists i got it yeah i mean i was on a national (laughs) tour in december 2019 so it's very likely that any of us could be responsible again my apologies to anyone who recognizes what tour i'm referring to we were all pretty healthy this isn't responsible for the pandemic anyway I mean, as far as we know. Just kidding. Um, There's a lawyer (laughs) off camera just like, no, no. (laughs) You know, where Santa Claus comes, there is no no pandemic. (laughs) Where Santa Claus comes, there's no pandemic. Whatever fringe shows you have been in have all been wonderful, and the writer has been great. Why did Spencer send you to the show? I don't know why he sent (laughs) you. Oh, I can I can hear him now. I can hear I can hear the lawyer now. Yeah. Um, wow, I should probably watch my questions. Anyways, uh, okay, <laughs> so let's go on to the next question. Uh, what do you love about improv? What what makes you want to keep taking classes and keep learning and keep discovering through improv? I think as someone who fancies themselves at least interested in being that Orson Welles trifecta of writer, director, actor, I really love how with improv you get to kind of create your story and carry it out at the same time. So like you really drive the emotions and you really bring it to life because now stand up offers something very similar where you're writing material and you're performing, but that is like the loneliest art form in the world. And so rough where like, it's just you mainly talking about yourself. And most of the time your audience is only going to be other comedians who are rooting for you to fail so that their jokes are seen as funnier and get bigger laughs. Now, with improv, you don't necessarily have much bigger audiences, but at the very least, you're on a team of very talented people. You get to bounce off each other. You get to make funny comments and funny stories, and you never know what to expect, because when you really have a good improv team, the people are really just carrying the suggestions away from you. And you're just like, ooh, what do we do next? And it's so exhilarating that joy of discovery. Yeah, I think it's great. I also think what's interesting about improv is, is there is a balance of of playing for yourself, playing for your team, and playing for the audience. And it's really a captivating experience for improvisers who can capture all three 
like effortlessly. <laughs> Not me at all. I'm very awkward. Uh, but, but as far as like being able to balance, um, I want to do this show for me, but I also want to do it as a way to support my team. And I also want to do it as a way to make the audience feel good. And I think that, that it takes a very specific improviser to do that. And I think it kind of back onto what you're saying. Um, because improv is so fascinatingly unique. Uh, and I think there's only a few people that I can count that I've seen that successfully can navigate all nooks and crannies of improv in one, like, one fell swoop. And it's quite incredible. And I, 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 I yearn to be that one day. <laughs> one day. I yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. It's very... It... <laughs> You always hate it when like you're doing it and you're not being quite called out on it but i'm like i made this all about backstory exposition i just wasted all my time labeling everything in the scene instead of connecting with my partner Ugh. this is what my capricorn brain does as i go um hey mom dad here we are at summer camp and i just want to let you know it's my astronaut camp and i can't believe you forgot to pack my lunch i that was full of apples and stuff so i think we should figure out how your relationship as your marriage is going to continue if you can't remember the little things like lunch what say you parents parents friends and then and then the parents go what just happened <laughs> Instead of me just going, Mom, Dad, you forgot to pack my lunch for astronaut camp. Like, that's all we need. We don't need all me explaining what I'm doing. I think in one of my last improv, like, practice sessions in class in December, my, te my teacher did call me out on it, and he probably was right, too. I literally initiated a scene with, all right, you walk 10 paces, I walk 10 paces, we fire, this is a duel. And I'm just like, nah, this is a duel scene. We're just... Which I mean, granted, it was very clear what the what the yeah. I was just like, yeah, that scene was very clear. The game. <laughs> My teacher actually was like, his biggest issue with the scene was like, now that's very dramatic. You made someone else, you labeled someone else in the class as carrying a gun, and I'm like, an old timey gun. It's very easy not to fire. You could even. But did fire I say it, it was a gun? It could have. You could have fired a. Uh, the, uh, the bracelet you could have fired a, a shirt cannon i didn't say a gun you could have fired fire. a, you could have fired our personal assistants you know yeah that would have been a fun game to play too of like what do you mean like what kind of fire are we talking you know fire the bang bang the boom boom so your teacher made assumptions he did make <laughs> assumptions oh boy <laughs> <laughs> all right who am it's i uh... okay <laughs> Hey, uh, teacher, you are terrible at improv. You should never make assumptions. That's one of the rules you tell us. Never make assumptions. Why am I using a phone like this also? Um, what do you mean that that people can't Why do I talk on speaker improv? by holding it? Yeah, I'm on speaker. Everyone needs to hear this. Why, why can't people die in improv scenes? Let me kill my scene partners. Look. I have no problem with people dying in teens. And in fact, it's worked very successfully. There was a duel, I think, in a first, I remember. Oh, I got to hang up. Hold on. I'll call you back later. Oh, okay, good. All right. Yeah, I already, uh, I, uh, I left him on. I, uh, I uh, remember my teacher for 5B at IO mm. once said, she was doing a scene with another member of her team. And it was like a duel scene. And they got into like a, a gunfight. And she shot the other character and the other character died in the scene. And because of the set they were doing, it was like a long form, like whatever. So this character, he, the, the actor, actually, the improviser, actually just stayed dead for the whole show. He was <laughs> laid on the stage dead for the whole show because he was killed in the first scene. And I guess they like won cage match and everything, but it was like this whole, like the whole show was just him. <laughs> Which is like such a commitment to a bit. But also, like, I, I was like, I feel like I'd want to get up and, like, do more. But <laughs> it's like I also, like, there are days where I may want to be just, like, just just kill me in this scene and let me just, like, live on stage. That guy, like, made a clear adjustment. It's like, do I want to be known as, like, clever and fun in different ways? Or do I just want the audience's 100% attention in, like, every scene? And then I'm trying to think, like, you would, you would want to hope that they would have a scene set in, like, a cemetery or with like ghosts so you could just pop up and say hi real quick and then go back down yeah it's it. it's easy it's easy like thinking about that like if that was a herald type scene 
You have yeah. a character who still lives and a character who's dead. Everyone's going to want to bring back that character who lived, but what if you brought back the character who was dead <laughs> in the second and the third beat? Like, that would be just something that's so drastically different. Uh, and it could be that, like, it comes back as a ghost, or this character could literally just be dead in different places. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh take my him to the cemetery. Take him to, like, whatever, the, whatever. Just, like, dead, like, the whole, that would be, like, a fun little, especially, like, a third beat of, like, this character just, yeah. and sweep out at that real quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, that being said, um, that sounds like such a fun moment in an improv scene that I can't wait to see one day. Are there any fun <laughs> moments you've had in any improv scenes as an improviser or as an audience member that really stuck with you? Like a two-person scene with like specific characters or like a world that was built or just like the humor and dialogue. What, what to you, are there any favorite moments that you remember from improv scenes? Oh, God. I remember I one improv because I've done so much Zoom improv, which is like yeah. really crazy to think about now. But Zoom improv. Zoom improv. But I remember one zoom prob where like we were we were bank robbers but it was during the pandemic so everyone was wearing a mask so we didn't know who was on our same team as the bank robbers but obviously we're improving so not only do we not have masks but we are just on a bunch of boxes trying to label everyone and trying to gesture with like our hands up and with guns and it's like hey you go get the bank money and it's like I'm not one of your partners. I'm the bank teller. I'm like, don't. And just, just it, the scene ended up working because it just became like, look, we're just trying our best here. Don't, don't mock me. It but, feels very like Scooby Doo. Let's see who's behind that mask. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. It's you. You should be behind the mask, Lyle. Don't you say our real names. What is the matter with you? <laughs> That's so funny. That feels like an improv scene that I've seen before or like in a movie. I don't know. I feel oh. like everything starts to blur together now. Yeah. See, now the thing is with this prompt, and this is like, if you want to talk different styles, like Second City, I feel with Second City encouraging you to come out with a premise, like that really like raises the chance for hilarity. Like, mm -hmm. I just remember coming out on one scene and just going, librarian. I'd like to check out this piece of pornography, please. And then my scene part is just like, oh, okay. This is in the system. I mean, you're an mm -hmm. adult. Yep, I turned 18. And it was just so much fun <laughs> to just throw mm -hmm. that premise. And I'm like, what are, what are they going to do with it? I'm yeah, here. exactly. It's, it's always fun to see what happens. Uh, and I've also learned it's, <laughs> I quite enjoy just walking out and making a physical choice and just figuring it out from there or having someone label it or whatever. Because when I talk, I like to ramble. ramble. And so I just decide to make a choice by just going out and like doing this and just having someone tell me what I'm doing. And then I'll Oh yeah. Groundlings there. broke me that way with the reaching graphs. And so now whenever mm. I think of like scene work, especially after zoom, I'm like, what am I doing? Uh, Ah, yes. I have a fishing pole. Oh, no, mm -hmm. we are in a kitchen. I am churning, but I don't know. Help. Yeah, My exactly. Hands are up here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I want to ask you uh, on a quick side note, if you, not a side note, it's still part of the show. If you have any plugs or pitches, anything you want to share, I know you have a show coming up in March. March. Um, but... Well, yeah, I mean, you know, Find at TMP Prod on Instagram, uh, at Troy MP94 on Twitter, and you can keep caught up with all my fun stuff. But I have another review with Second City coming up for listeners or viewers in the Chicago area. In March, my Grad Review 6 is doing our big end of session show. So after one year of going in the conservatory and Grad Review trenches, we're going to do a little review full of sketches and songs and things we hope are funny. And you can see and that at Second City, Chicago, every Monday in March or in February, if you would like to come to a preview for an improv sketch show. You know, at what, what time? Uh, it's Central Time, right? What time? Yeah, Central time, time. So that'll be like seven to eight o'clock um, Central Time on all Mondays in February and March in person. So the audience will be masked. We won't, but we are masked in class, which has its challenges. 
Uh, but yeah, no, come down to Second City, Chicago at seven o'clock every Monday. Chicago, Chicago, get your portillo, get yourself a deep dish, get your Illuminati's pizza, get in the car, and then go in and go to Chicago. Why did I do Massachusetts? In the and then middle? watch the Blues Brothers while you're at it. And watch the Blues Brothers, Brothers while you're at it. Hey, now look, you gotta get down on Michigan, you gotta go down Wabash, and you gotta get down to Well Street, and you gotta go to Chicago. Was that the 1940s gangsters now? <laughs> no, no, it's funny. So, like, last night, I'm playing this sausage factory guy in class. And our teacher, again, we are in Chicago. It's an in-person class in Chicago. He's like, yeah, do you, do you know how to talk Chicagoan? How's your Chicago accent? And I'm like, yeah, I can kind of do that. I think that's maybe a little more Wisconsin, but okay. Yeah, maybe a little more Fargo. Fargo yeah, a little more Dakota. Fargo, don't you know? Yeah, I love Fargo just because it's surprisingly accurate to the Midwest. I have cousins in Green Bay, and I have cousins in was in Toronto, in like the Toronto area, and the Green Bay cousins have far thicker Canadian accents than the ones mm. in Canada. At least it's at least it's Fargo and not near come, you know. Oh God! Because <laughs> you know, far and near and go and. What happened come, to the family friendly joke, Spencer? No, it, have... it is. I guess stop. I guess like I said near stop. I don't know what the opposite of go. I guess the opposite of go is stop, not come. Uh, yeah. Stop? I guess near stop. Near stop, I guess, is the joke. Okay, this is my Capricorn brain explaining it because now I'm self-conscious about the joke. So you, know, um, you get the idea. The joke, and I'm laughing, so I guess we should just explain all our jokes from now on. <laughs> Speaking of explaining all of our jokes, um, Troy, I have one final question for you here on the info oh. summit. Uh, it's the reason why the Improv Summit exists. Um, a lot of times before pandemic, and even now, so I've taken so many different classes from so many different places and a lot of different styles of improv, musical, hip-hop, short form, long form. And I always get people that are like, hey, Spencer, you take a lot of improv. Where should I take improv? And it's always a hard question for me because, I mean, it's a very vague question. Like, there's so much variety that I can't really necessarily pinpoint an answer. I kind of want people to like kind of figure it out on their own, like kind of discover what works for them. Uh, but if someone came up to you and asked you, where should I take improv? What's one tip or one piece of advice you'd give to someone to help guide them on their improv journey? Mm, that's a very loaded question because I've only sure taken is. improv at Groundlings and Second City. And I am in both of those programs right now. And here's the real kicker. I didn't. I only took that one preliminary class at Groundlings before going on to the core tracks for both. So, I I admit I'm not the best advice for someone just starting on their improv journey. But I guess I would just say just look at where you are as a performer and just see what you want to work on, and that should kind of dictate your choice. Like ucb which i haven't taken but what i've heard a lot about is they're really focused on the construction of the scene so you kind of want to work on oh i love acting but like how do i really build a scene with multiple beats ucb sounds really geared to that if you are like i want to do this as an actor a non-stop audition everything i do will be an audition and i will do wild and big characters and i will emotionally mm -hmm. feel myself through the scene that would be Groundlings. And some might argue that's the toughest one and that's the one I started with. So it's uh, it's where you're at in your philosophy. Second City, I will say for Second City, they do seem to have a good all encompassing umbrella. Like if you really just want, well, I don't know if I'm great at acting or at writing the scene, then it's like, okay, then Second City kind of will walk you through the basics of like how improv works and especially will get you to that sketch stage quicker because mm -hmm. I think a lot of improv people, um, this is a very long-winded answer because I think a lot of improv people do get stuck sometimes and just what am I individually bringing to a scene and they can't think of like, we're kind of creating sketch comedy here. Mm -hmm. Like we do have a goal for what we're trying to do with it. So that's something Second City does very well. Yeah, I agree. I think um, a lot of it is really just discovering what works for you. If it's not working, try something else. And if that doesn't work, try something else. Maybe just keep trying a couple places until you find the one that kind of like kind of like fits your style or fits your comedy. And that and it's not 
And it's not, it's weird because it's like people, it's like, I know for me, like, I feel like I'm a failure if I don't like this program because everyone else loves it. But really it's, it's to your own liking and your own taste. If you don't like something like it's okay. Like you might love one program and completely love it. And other people are like, it's not for me or vice versa. You might be like, this isn't for me, but other people love it. And that's okay. Find what you love. Uh, and I think, been... oh. no, I was gonna say, and I think that that is really, um, it's really beneficial uh, advice. Especially since I think something I kind of needed to process with my improv schools and really everyone should be processing. Again, I'm just a megalomaniac, but very few of the improv schools are like they were in 1991 or 1992, where like you did a couple of good classes in a row, the teachers liked you, and then suddenly you were on Saturday Night Live or Friends or like something like that. There's a lot of people going through the schools right now. Obviously, many of them are not doing super great during the pandemic. So at the end of the day, exactly what you said, just think about what the schools do for your style and how they help you grow as a comedian, an actor, a writer, and an improv artist. And mm -hmm. remember, build your style. It's not, it's not so much about, <laughs> oh, if I get to this level, I'll get looked at for sitcoms. Like that's mm -hmm. not a great way to look at it. He says totally not admitting that's how he looked at it for a bit. But yeah, well, a, lot people, a lot of people do. <laughs> <laughs> uh anyways thanks Troy, so much for joining us here on the improv summit i'll have to figure out i can never figure this out we'll do the fist yeah there we go yeah. um, i did say that was the last question i had for you but as always uh -oh. on this show i am a big liar so i actually have another question for you i was there at uh, sheboygan wisconsin on the night of the 11th anyone else who tells you is a liar <laughs> i answered it great all right all right. I don't know why I thought that was so funny. I don't even get it. <laughs> why was that so funny? It's kind of tragic. Well, that was good. <laughs> Speaking of improv, uh, we talked a lot oh, about oh, improv. Oh, improv. Okay. You want to you wanna do some improv? Well, my lawyer is telling me yes. So, yeah, I'll do some improv. <laughs> All right, let's do it, but only on the night of the 11th in Sheboygan. No, I don't want anyone to know what I was doing that night. I was in Sheboygan. I wasn't there. Hey, no one saw me. I don't, my uh, cheeks are out of it. This is funny. My cheeks are... <laughs> All right, let's do some improv. Yay. All right, we're going to do some improv. Troy, what name from you is the answer to this question. Do you want a location, a relationship, or a word? I'll take location. All right, I'm going to give you two. You tell me which one you want to go with. Suggestions are a battery factory and I don't even know what this is. A, to a terrace? A terrace? Terra a t it's not spelled like terrace. It's, it's T-E-R-R-A-S-S-E. -S -S -E. A flat paved area outside a cafe where people sit to take fresh refreshments. I don't even know what this looks like. Oh, oh, okay, okay. It's just like it's just like an outdoor patio at a cafe. Well, Those you put a lot of work here. into explaining that, so I have to go battery factory. You don't, yeah, great. I was gonna say you don't have to go with that one, but you want anyway, <laughs> so it works out. Um, all right, so battery factory. Thank you. Who would you like to initiate this scene? I'll initiate the scene. Great. All right, thank you. Battery factory. The days are. One millionth battery, Terry. Yeah, uh, Jacob, you are, I gotta say, you're like the best battery maker, cleaner, putter in her that uh, I think I've ever seen. The only one, Terry. The only one who truly can get inside its head and realize that energy is what makes the world go round. Yeah. I feel like that's what the Energizer Bunny would say if the Energizer Bunny was our company. <laughs> I knew him, Terry. I knew him before he got big. I knew him when he was just a lowly little floor technician like you, Terry. If one day you're going to put the Energizer Bunny to shame. One day you'll be making your own one millionth battery. Oh, I hope not. You hope not? 
Yeah, I just I'll be honest, making batteries is not not my not my thing. Um, but Jacob, you're very good at it. You're very good at it, my friend. Not your thing. Not your thing. Well, that I just you wanna... come here to watch me at work. Yeah, I just want to make sure that you are supported in your choices of lifestyle. You know, my father didn't support me becoming a, a battery manufacturer. I do. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you were my dad. <laughs> but unfortunately, you are but a lad of 25, and I'm 57 years old. Hmm. Yeah, if only we could reconnect with our estranged parents every now and then, maybe in one way or another, one one incantation, incarnation uh, to the next. Yeah, yeah, it'd be a shame. It'd be a shame if your father was right in front of you, you know, and he just heard you say, I don't want to do your job, Dad. You know, it'd be a real shame if that was your father, your actual father right in front of you, huh? Yeah, I mean, you know, I hope that my dad would support any kind of choice that I make in my life, um, whether it's a battery manufacturer or, you know, something else. Don't tell me how I know this. But your father does support you. He just doesn't understand. Um, well, I really appreciate those words, Jacob. Um, I feel like there's something a little deeper we should dive into here. Um, do you, do you know my dad? I know him better than I know myself or this lithium double A. I won't bore you with it. You're my dad. Yes! I'm your father, okay? No one would ever talk about lithium AA batteries and then say, never mind, unless it was my dad. And I know you've missed me, your long-lost son, Terry, but I have something to tell you, Jacob. Yeah? Yeah? I'm actually your father, Richard. Rich? Dad? Wait! But Dad, what have you done to my son? See? <laughs> Thanks everybody so much for coming to the Improv Summit. As always, I'm your host, Spencer. That's Troy. See you next time. Bye! <laughs>